you've got your business idea, you're excited, the business plan looks good. However, a key thing obviously before you can get really started is funding. So in this video, we're just gonna run through 10 practical ideas to get funding to get you started. So Neil, you've been an accountant and business advisor for over 30 years. You've seen a lot of businesses trying to get money, needing money. What, in your view, in terms of number one, simplest way to get money, to get funding, to get you started? Well, the easiest and simplest thing is if you've got your own money, use that. Because then you're not reliant on anyone else. You're not um, beholden to anyone else. Um, so if you've got your own money... You can, you can just use that. There's no delays then, you just transfer your money into your business account and you start using it for whatever you know your business plan says you need that money for. And you can put it in in different ways and tell, you can put it into the Yeah, if we assume plan. that you're a limited company, um, which you know, we, there's other videos around whether you should be a company or a sole trader, but if you are a limited company and you put money into the company, you can do it either by way of loan so you lend money to the limited company, which is its own legal entity, or you invest in the company and the company issues you with shares for that. But if it's just you and it's your own money and your own company, usually the rule of thumb is you put it in a few pounds or a few hundred pounds for shares and then any other money that's needed, you lend it to the company rather than put it in as shares because to get money back out of the company, there's a legal process you have to go through to sort of cancel your shares or have the company buy back your shares. Whereas if it's a loan, the company can just repay your loan. So once you know you put in some money to buy the first amount of stock or do whatever it is, you've made a money, mm -hmm. the company can just pay you back. And it can pay you back plus interest, which is again part of the how am I going to extract profits from the company interest is a good way of extracting profits okay. because um, there's no national insurance on it. Now, assuming, obviously that's the simplest and it'd be a lovely, but assuming we don't have thousands, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands or even millions of pounds floating around in our bank account, it'd be, it would be nice. Number two, <clears throat> family and friends. I think yeah, and I think the amount is, obviously is relevant yeah. you know, as yeah. to how much, but if, if you need £10,000 and you haven't got it, it's a problem if you need a yeah. hundred thousand pounds and you've only got ten thousand you've got to find another way of doing it so you know if, if you're a multi-millionaire and you're going to launch your own business but you want it to be electric vehicles you're still going to need to raise money so yeah. i think there is you know the way i think we can go through this is sort of the amount of money is a sort of relevant so you start off it's your own the assumption is it's a relatively small amount of money, or at least small to you, yeah. so that you can invest. The next thing is family and friends. You know, who who do you know who would share your belief that there is a, a viable business there, um, wants to help you, wants to back you? Family and friends can can put money in. And likewise, do they lend you the money? Do they lend the, the business the money? Or do they invest in the business and you know, own some of the business. And that's obviously something for you to take into account that it's now not all yours. Um, but linked to that, if they invest, there are, in, in the UK at least, there are um, tax reliefs available to people who invest in startups and early stage businesses. Uh, Seed, Enterprise Investment Scheme, the investors get up to 50% tax relief on their investment. So they put £10,000 in, they save £5,000 in tax. When they sell those shares, they pay no capital gains tax. Um, if if the size of the business or the type of investment means you don't qualify for that, you might qualify for enterprise investment scheme where they get 30% tax relief on their investment. So they put in 10000 save 3000 in tax. So you know, reducing the exposure um, for them and giving them some other tax breaks to say when they exit or if there's an exit, there's no no capital gains tax. So um, and, and you, know, you can be offering them, you know, it, it's yeah. not all give me your money, give me your money, you'll get half of it back in tax relief or almost a third of it. And, you know, when I grow it and sell it, you'll, you'll get it all back tax free. 
and there's, a, there's, there's almost a good habit to get started is that if you start ask whether you've got family or friends or not to, to, like even the process of starting to to try to look for money is getting into that habit of talking about your business trying to sell you number one or your company or your founders etc whoever was involved selling your vision in it as in we've talked about before as in it's really important just to keep testing that with with people yeah. and so i'm just testing that with family and friends and i guarantee you'll be surprised in terms of people who just but if you consistently talk about it a friend of a friend or a family friend who you didn't know about as in the more you're talking about it the more chance of someone somewhere it piques their interest potentially oh yeah absolutely i think that as you say there's two sides one is the family and friends and it might be a much extended family and friends and more yeah. people you talk to and as you said as well you know the more people you talk to the more you know the more they might challenge well actually i don't want to invest in it because you what about this or what about that it might be something you haven't thought of or it'll be a way for you to well, no i have thought about that and this is how we're yeah. going to overcome it and this is why it's still a good business um build and, some and, confidence yeah, yeah and build yourself. confidence for yourself because yeah, yeah. even if you're not putting any money in you're putting going to be putting time and effort and and stuff in so you know talking to a network of people um, and the more people you can find who have got relevant you know anyone in your network who's got relevant experience of either startups or your industry or or you know whatever it is you're doing you know that that, that would be useful to to talk to them if your family and friends don't have any money don't have the money or your family and friends you the more you need more than than they've got the next sort of stage is as i say it's either angels or crowdfunding and crowdfunding is quite sort of in at the moment and you know there's various um platforms available that you pay your fee you upload your business plan and your your pitch documents your pitch deck and you can register so you if you were interested in investing in businesses you register you can go on you can do a bit of research on yeah. them and and you invest and it, the idea is it's quite a lot of people investing relatively small amounts of money isn't always you know it, it, it can be, look more like the traditional business angel funding which we'll come on to next but it's um yeah, it's, it's a much broad, generally it's a much broader range of people. So there'll be people you don't know, people you have no necessary interaction with. They just like the idea. They, they understand the, the, the market you're in and whatever. And, and so um, you go with them. And it, I mean, as well, it, it sounds great and exciting and it is an exciting thing, but it's probably a couple of things to bear in mind is some of the platforms won't take you on unless you've raised sort of 50, yeah. 60, sometimes even... 70 80 percent of the amount that you're looking to do so when you go online and you see these things of oh there's only five percent left sometimes the founders have raised 70 percent themselves and are only looking for that sort of 30 yes. percent through crowdfunding which isn't always so it can be a top clear. up to yeah. the family and friends but so some it, of the platforms won't even take you on i don't think unless no, no, you've if, got if, that yeah they because they, they don't want to have yeah the, they don't want to have um businesses on their platform that don't raise the money they want to be saying it was oversubscribed by 20 percent 25 percent whatever um and you know i think yeah when it when people first got involved i think there was a bit of um misunderstanding of that but i think it's now sort of accepted it, it is it isn't a route to just getting funding yeah. you know that I, there may well be people out there who have you know got some idea that goes viral and, and you can crowdfund but yeah they want it goes up Oh, within the first day, we've already got 30% of the funding yeah. that actually it was secured before it went up. Oh, at the end yeah. of the week, we were at 70%. And you're just trying to, you know, to it's top, that sort of PR, yeah. get a bit of excitement and, and get the top up bit for, for what you've yeah. got. Um, yeah, they do charge fees for it. Um, as I say, you, you end up with people you don't know as shareholders and whatever. A lot of them, you know, allow you to have different types of shares so they might be non-voting shares because you know you don't want to have a thousand shareholders all investing a thousand pounds because you've then got a thousand people you've got to talk to yeah. and get permission off from before you're allowed to do certain things so what they would tend generally do is say actually they can participate in all the financial rewards but they don't have any say in the running of the company um 
And that, but that, but touching what you said, that marketing element is all is can be a key thing. A bit of crowdfunding of whether if it's a product you've got or something like that. The, the crowdfunders can almost be like fans of they get the first iteration yeah. of the product or whatever it is, and then almost they become fans as well and investors, and you can use it for marketing. However, yeah. on the downside, there's no doubt there's a lot of admin that Don't. comes with it. As more people get involved, the amount. The platforms do try and make it as easy as possible. However, there is a lot of admin that comes with a yeah. lot of people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that sort of leads on. So in, if, if the number of people, the next sort of, and as I say, it's sort of alongside it really is business angel funding. Um, so business angels are high net worth individuals generally or people who have been successful and they want to invest in, in businesses. Um, again, they're generally always interested in those SEIS and EIS tax reliefs. You know, there'll be certain angels out there that, well, if it hasn't got those tax reliefs, I'm not interested um, because, you know, I'm going to put £10,000 into your business and get no tax relief. I can put £10,000 into this guy's business and get five grand back in tax. So for some people, that could actually be a disqualifying thing. And, you know, we can talk for... A long time about um, SEIS and EIS. It's very um, there's a lot um, of anti avoidance tax legislation around it, as you might expect, because it's such a generous relief for the investor. You know, they halve their investment is protected by um, getting tax relief back, um, and it's also considered state aid. So there's loads of other um, regulations mm-hmm. and legislation around it, but. Um, you know, you have your biz, the trade you're entering into has to qualify, the age of your business has to qualify, the size of your business has to qualify. So don't assume that just because you're a startup or a new business, oh, I'm bound to qualify for that. Go and check because that will have an impact as to how interested angels uh, would be in investing. And that's up to you as a business to, to make sure that you. To get proof that you qualify yeah, you can, for that for those reliefs. You can actually apply for advance assurance from the Inland Revenue. So um, there's a process to go through. You write to the Inland Revenue. You give them all the facts. This is what we're going to do. This is how long we've been trading. Uh, this is how much money we're going to raise, etc., etc., etc. Will you confirm that if anyone invests in us, they will get that tax relief? So there are things that you can do to, that you can do to make sure. Um, that your investors are going to get the reliefs they're expecting. And, that, and the reality is business angels, that is more than likely going to be something that they're going to look for and, and want and need hide. Well, well, if, it, the, it, if they more, don't... It is typical. Yeah, if they don't get it. I mean, in my experience, angels look for reasons not to invest. They don't look for reasons to invest. So, because there's lots of people out there want their money. So here we've got someone wants 10,000, this person wants 10,000. EIS relief, I'm only actually risking five. And if it's successful, my profit is tax free. No EIS relief, I'm actually risking 10 grand. And if it's successful, I'll pay 20% tax on the uplift. Well, unless this is a guaranteed win, why wouldn't I use, I'll go with that one. So if you, you know, there will be people that, if it doesn't have SEIS or EIS relief, they won't even read the business plan. Yeah. And it, it sort of comes back to the point we made a little bit earlier as well of the point of differentiator for you could be like not just treating a business angel of just give me your yeah. money, of they have particular skills in a, in a, or experience in a sector or skills. And you probably hear it in Dragon's Den a lot of when people come on, they're looking for a particular dragon because they have experience in a sector or track record of doing it. And business angels are the same as they, if they, if it was a restaurant or whatever, and they've invested in restaurants with the experience of, that will be a differentiator for them, especially if you're open and wanting to get yeah, I think, that I think, input in, into the business from them as well as their money. I, yeah, I think it's a two way street. I think it would be foolish for the founder or the business person to not take advantage of the experience and knowledge that the angels have. You know, as I say, the majority of them will have been successful and that's why they've got money and they understand business and that's why they want to be an angel investor rather than just be a property investor or play the stock market or whatever else. And that sort of takes us near that. We're probably seeing as the, the control element of we're probably, it's getting harder 
as you go down this sort of list of getting the money, there's more probably for you to do, etc. And also with that comes sort of control. You're sort of ceding more yeah. and more control and going on to, to five with private equity and sort of venture capital, you're definitely sort of control-wise, you're definitely losing, yeah, and, and losing think, more of it. And, and part of that is, as we said at the beginning, it sort of is linked to the amount of money you want to raise. Because if you want to raise, you know, seven figures, a million pounds and, and upwards, finding business angels who typically invest 25,000, 50,000 maybe at a time. You've got to find a lot of angels if you want a million pound. You might be lucky and you find the one high net worth who'll do it all. But, you know, generally, the bigger the money, the more people, you know, the, the you go down this sliding scale. So, you know, yeah. your own money, your friends and family, crowdfunding, angels. And then if it's big, you go to private equity and VCs who really are just an a, a big angel but actually they representing a group of angels. So it's where I said business angels want to invest, see you in five years, let me know how you did. A VC and a private equity group generally find a lot of high net worths, pool all their money. I will then make the investments on all of yours behalf. I will monitor it, manage it and, you know, try and make you money as um, at the end of the whole process. But for you, the more money you're taking, the more control the people giving you the money will want. So if you go to an angel and they put in £10,000, they're going to want you to give them information once a quarter, yeah. once a year. If they're putting in £100,000, they'll probably want a bit more information and I'd say if a private equity group or a VC is putting in hundreds of thousands or in some cases millions of pounds, they're going to want a lot more information and potentially they're going to want an influence. Yeah. So, you know, very often there will be a condition of the investment will be we have a seat on the board. A condition of the investment is here's a list of, and they call it restricted matters. Here's a list of 20 things that although we might only own 20% of the company, you cannot make a decision on these certain things without our sign-off. And it, there'll be things like, you, you know, you can't borrow money because if we've invested, yeah, we, we don't, don't want you borrowing writing. money and yeah. giving security to a bank or someone else. So you can't do that without our involvement and say so. And as I say, so the more you take or the more they invest, the more information they're going to want, the more influence mm -hmm. they're going to want, or the more control sure. they're going and to And that buy. can get to the stages of they can just sometimes want to entirely change the business. So if they decide, they don't think the business is working and they'll go, right, I want us to shift to something. Yeah. Whether it can be tangential or totally different, just because we want, want to get the money back and grow it. Absolutely. So I mean, they will, you know, use your, if it doesn't work out, they'll use your business plan against you. You know, we invested on the basis that you were going to do X, Y, yeah. and Z. You haven't done X, Y, and Z, therefore we're now going to take control because you haven't delivered what you said you were going to deliver. Uh, you know, it's not all like that, but yes. the worst case scenario no. is if you're taking their money, you know, their, their job, particularly private equity groups and VCs, they are managing other people's money. So they're responsible for that. And part of that would be, well, we're not just giving you the money in the hope that you're going to be successful. successful. If you're not, we will step yeah. in and, and help. Yeah, which is quite... Help. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The um, So just briefly, before we continue, just if you like this video, please, and you find it helpful, please hit the like button. Uh, thanks for doing that. Really, it gives us a great uh, guide as to whether the, the content we're producing is um, giving you more clarity and helping for your business. So we do appreciate that. And given we're sort of, five ways into our 10 list of ways through money and we've not talked about the banks yet the um you're probably wondering why we haven't you well not if they've seen our video on banks yes they we're not know exactly why we haven't <laughs> you can banks are technically put technically an option for things like loans yeah. etc however 
whether you're it's worth your time even bothering these days is is I think something too. Yeah, our videos are for people starting out is to try and help you w- when you're yeah. starting out to you know or get a lot of information yeah. um, to help you quickly get through that that really busy period of starting up and and the banks you know rule of thumb the banks are not really interested in startups you know it'll be come back in a year or two when you've proven yeah. your concept that you've got loads of money and even then they're not alone. they're not yeah. that interested in and and then it, businesses almost. and then it will be what security have you got and, and things like that so the banks are a limited source of funding for many businesses not all, you know, there are some. If, if you've got freehold property and security and, and, and things, then yes, I'll, you know, the banks will be happy to lend. But um, for the majority of early stage businesses, it is more challenging to get a loan from a bank than... It's very generous, it challenging. Yes. <laughs> Impossible. <Yeah. laughs> Don't yeah. waste your time. The, uh, for, as in, for the sake of completeness, as in... Types of loans for banks, short short term, yes. long term. <clears throat> well, there's two sides. So one is the banks giving just you know a traditional loan. Here's some money. Pay us back over three, five years or whatever. Um, that's you know very simple traditional yeah. sort of lending. Um, you can have what's known as uh, asset finance. So I'm buying a particular asset, like you might just if you've ever bought your own car. You can have HB, you can have leases, you can do... The same thing applies to a business. I'm buying an asset, go to the bank, will you lend me money with monthly repayments, leases, rentals, whatever it is, so that I can buy this um, buy this asset. Um, the other one is if you're taking money by um, using credit cards or people pay you via credit cards using PDQs and, and stuff, the banks or the providers of those services will give you an advance on future receipts. If you receive X uh, X thousand pounds every week via credit cards, then the um, the merchant providers, the, the people supplying the process, will say, well, actually, we know, we've got a history here that you've been taking that amount of money. So yeah. we'll lend you an amount and we'll keep 10, 15% of whatever you take for the next, 20 weeks, whatever, so sort of four or five months. Um, and that's how you'll pay us back. So you don't actually make repayments, but obviously you are receiving less of okay. your takings um, there. So so that's, again, it's, it isn't the cheapest money out there, but it's very easy and very quick. If, you know, I know someone who's with Square, who as the people who are providing that, and it's literally, it. <clears throat> you go onto your Square account and it will say, you can have this much money tomorrow and you click a button yeah. and it's done. And then the I mentioned about um, security and the sort of traditional loans. If you the, the banks more and more security is is now a condition of any loan. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so if it's a personal guarantee, they want to see what security there is actually behind you. Um, if it's a business or a company, what security has that company got? And I think, you know, as a, as a result of that, and therefore the bank, you know, us saying it's so much more difficult to get money from the bank, there are government schemes where the government will actually step in and provide the security. The, you know, the one that everyone will have heard about is during COVID, bounce back yeah. loans, C-bills loans, and still as we are here in 2023, there's still COVID-related recovery loan schemes where... Um, if you can demonstrate that you are still struggling because of issues to do with COVID, the government will actually provide 80% or provide security for up to 80% of the loan that the bank um, provide to you. And that, that government sort of act takes us sort of neatly a little bit onto research and development grants, which are which can be available for things like probably the simplest example of some website development and things like that. There have been grants available for that, and they're obviously constantly changing in terms of what is available and how yeah. much money is there but that is this that's another route in terms of for funding yeah and there's two sides to that there's the sort of the actual grants that various bodies government and other bodies might give you to carry out certain r&d mm-hmm. 
but there's also um, R&D tax credits um, where if you are able to demonstrate that you spent money on um, research and there are again clear definitions of what is research so if you're just it needs to be the way they talk about it is it needs to be groundbreaking so you can't just be repurposing some existing technology yeah. you need to be explaining Trying what is the advance, problem yeah. why doesn't it why hasn't it been solved before what are the what makes it hard to be solved what are you going to do or what did you do etc cetera, etc cetera. and then the money you're you've paid on that you either get an enhanced cost so if you paid 100 pounds they'll say well it's 130 pounds and you get that extra mm -hmm. relief so you pay less corporation tax if you're not a taxpayer there's a way they'll actually send you a credit for the R and D that you've spent. Yeah. So it, it is, it is a form of funding. funding. You're receiving you're receiving money that you don't have to give back. But this is probably a good example of R and D grants where there's a lot of sort of detail underneath. And as I say, Neil, we're going to put um, a poll in the in pin comment below. So if there's particular aspects of funding like R and D grants or or loans or business angels that you want to find out more about specifically and want us to do a follow-up video, please go down and, and vote on that just now. And and moving on to sort of the next one of customers paying up front is an option in terms of not potentially a, a simple one or doesn't work for every type of business, but it is a, a possible option. Yeah, I think I, th I yeah, I think the we have got three left to go through and and, and these are sort of free money if you like in as much as if you get a customer to pay you up front you're not having yeah. to pay arrangement fees you're not paying interest you're not paying whatever so you know the travel industry people expect to pay up front if you're an author and or you know uh, a known author yeah. and whatever the publishing house might give you an advance um, but if there are other areas you know consultants um, other people they might want a down payment you know some form of commitment fee we're going to charge you x thousand pounds half on signing the contract half at the end of the contract you know and all of that is allowing you to fund you know buying whatever mm -hmm. materials you need or yeah. paying your staff whilst they do it before you uh, in that so I think it, it it's not relevant to everybody, um, yeah. as all of these, none, none of these will be relevant to every single person. And some people can use it as sort of as a marketing thing of it, whatever, yeah. having it almost under construction website where they say, this is coming, and as I say, you can put down payments on this and you'll be the first one to get it. So I mean, yeah. people can use it as a, yeah. again, as I said, it doesn't apply to, to every business and probably lots it doesn't, but it is an option for some people yeah. to, to think about as is inv invoice discounting. Well, yeah, well, invoice discounting is a similar concept, but it's where the bank pay you up front, effectively. So invoice discounting or factoring um, is where you're raising invoices. So I raise an invoice for £10,000, and the bank will say, I'll tell you what, I'll lend you £8,000 against that invoice, and when the customer pays, that's when you pay me back. Um, again, there's lots of hoops and things to ju jump through you know if you've only got one customer there'll be limits that the um, banks will want if your if your customers don't have a good credit rating there'll be limits applied to what you can do but if you've got a good broad range of you know successful businesses as your clients and you're raising invoices for when work is completed so it's slightly different it's, you're not being paid up front yeah. as such because if you the, the bank are saying, well, our security is that invoice. So if you haven't yet done the work, we can't be 100% certain the customer's going to pay. But if you've done the work or you've made the product or you've done whatever it is, and now you're sending an invoice that's going to be paid on 30 or 60 days, instead of waiting 30 or 60 days, we'll give you 75, 80% is the sort of norm of that invoice value now. Yeah. You've then got the money to do what you need to do when the customer pays, effectively you pay back the eighty percent that you've had. Yeah. So um, I mean, yeah, it's sort of it's an advance almost of yeah, what what's yeah. going to come. And again, we're talking about the security. The security is the fact that this reputable, financially stable business owes you money. That and you've done the work. You can prove you've done the work and whatever. The security is 
they're going to be good for the money. So that's and that's, and that's where the thing. banks will will check or whoever, as yeah. they'll make sure it's not just you can't just fire off an invoice. Oh no, there's there's try and set. There will be checks to go through. However, but it but it is an option. Oh yeah, no, and the, it's um, it it's a it's a very good option. There are certain businesses, certain industries where everyone in that sector pretty much um, has invoice discounting or, or factoring. The the difference, they effectively they're the same, but you have invoice discounting where um, what happens is you write to the customer and say, we're invoice discounting. When you pay, don't pay us, pay this trust account with XYZ Bank. And XYZ Bank then have complete visibility of everyone who's paying, that you have to report every t- not every time you send an invoice, but on a... M- you upload invoices onto their platform so they know how much you're owed, how much is in the bank and, and so on. Um, confidential invoice discounting is where you do it, but you don't tell the customers. So you the banks will lend you the 80% without having the same level of control and stuff. And then factoring is slightly further on where the bank effectively take ownership of the debt. So factoring is where I'm owed ten thousand pounds, and they said, "Well, I'll give you eight grand, and I'll take that debt on. If that customer doesn't pay, you get to keep the eight grand." Whereas invoice discounting is if the customer doesn't pay, somehow that you know you're going to pay that eight grand off by one of your other invoices that you you then raise. Um, so so it you know they'll say there are lots of sectors. The printing sector um, is a good example where you know almost. Every well, every printer I know has invoice discounting in place mm-hmm. because they've got massive outlay. They've printed stuff. They've bought material. They've bought paper. They've got an expensive printing press. <laughs> they've paid someone to man the thing. So all the costs are up front. Um, and, they, and they'll often be doing stuff for reputable businesses. Yeah. Therefore, the bank is happy to know that it will be paid at yeah. some point. Therefore, they're able to do it. Yeah. And sort of coming on to the, to the last one of. We sort of started almost a little bit with yourself and friends and, and friends of family of thinking now to the company and the business, your own staff are, are, are yeah, a yeah, potential um, yeah, this, source of funding. They, they are. I mean, it, it, it's not the sort of they're going to lend money or, or yeah. invest. What well, They sort of are investing. I mean, I think you know, when, when we were talking about it, it's that sort of whether it's options or, or some other way of doing it, but very often for startups... You know, people will be granted options so that they've got a you know skin in the game or whatever, but that might mean you can pay them less than the market rate. Right. So you get someone who you know should be earning fifty grand a year, you manage to get them for thirty five mm-hmm. grand a year plus they have mm-hmm. options um, to uh, to take part in. So if the business does well and they're part mm-hmm. of it, they've been paid less, but they'll get an upside once yeah. once everything's been. Uh, which, which can be great for motivation for, and also yep. again confidence wise if you have people believing in you and your business to that extent it can be a real sort of shot of confidence yeah that, that, that people who are you know are able to command that salary in the market are coming to you and able and sort of trusting that they'll get it back a different way yeah yeah and and again as with the angels there are certain schemes out there enterprise management incentive scheme is a, a good example that has been designed or was designed and is available for you know startup businesses to attract recruit and retain staff you know so so the and that there's some really good tax release for both the employer and the employee yeah. um and you know if you're interested you know let us know in the comments below and, and we could do uh, a whole video on the different options and 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 how they work and how you can use them to your advantage but yeah the the general gist of it is you'll probably get better quality people at a lower price because they can see an upside down the line yeah that's it for the for the funding video as as ever we wish you every success with your business and if you like this video punch one of those boxes on the screen and we'll see you over in the next one